YouTube, welcome back to another video. And yes, this video finally the RSX is getting a full I don't know about full, but it's getting an aero upgrade. I ordered some stuff from PCI, Procar Innovations, uh, the same people who did the uh, that I got my seat mount from, and finally arrived the other day. Take a look. Got their side skirts. You can get them in three different sizes: three, four, or five inches. I got the full five inches. And these right here are the wing plates for the 60 inch wing that I got. Those come in different sizes too, but I got 60. I was told that 60 puts it right at the edge of the body lines of the RSX. Um, and then here, I got a swan neck mount from them, rather than the, the normal under mount. So yeah, I don't know if you can hear it, but it sounds like thunder in the, in the distance. But even though it's like sunny as shit right now. Houston, I swear. Anyways, you probably noticed that there's like watermarks and stuff on the, the end plates and the side skirts. That's because I sprayed it down with like brake cleaner and stuff. I'm gonna wipe it down here in a minute because I am fixing to paint them. Jesus. I'm fixing to paint them uh, gloss white to match the base color of my RSX. Uh, no, I'm not gonna do a lot. I'm probably gonna do like three coats of the white, um, somewhat thick coats, uh, and then I'm gonna do a few of the, of a clear that I got. Ooh. Let's get this painting done. Steve's house with Jeff and Steve. We are finally upgrading the arrow on the RSX. We are gonna start with the wing first. Luckily, you can't see it through the wrap because we have to push through it, but there are holes for the OEM wing mounts. So what we're gonna do is mount the wing to the swan necks, then the swan necks to the trunk. So that way there is no mistake where the extra holes we need to drill for the other mounting points go. So here's the swan neck mounts, how they look like. They go on like this over here. We got to like Photoshop like a swan <laughs> in your hand. <laughs> I probably, I'll try and do that maybe. Oh damn it. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> so here's one part of the mount. It's two holes that go to the OEM spot, which this bolts into that. And then there's a three hole one that sandwiches like, like that. Oh, and then you drill three more holes. Like yeah, that. and then this, this gets sandwiched in between like, like that. Looks pretty good. So I guess we could just go ahead and drill like, uh, Hope those. yeah. I wouldn't tighten them all the way yet since we gotta make sure once this goes on that, it'll, it's, that the wings lined up correctly and shit. This thing actually does come with a pretty decent uh, instruction sheet. It tells you what part, what bag hardware goes where. But anyways, we uh, 
we didn't tighten these down, but we mounted these. We're gonna snug them up and then mount the actual wing to the mount. So that way we know exactly where to drill these. So I still look those. Mm-hmm. Then I guess put this in the middle because it's like the straightest. Yeah. The middle inner or outer? Outer. guys that's how it's that's how it looks just to reiterate I got a 60 inch long wing from them you can get longer or shorter from them I did paint this the end plates I'm we might build well not build but make uh, bigger end plates later on but for now this will be good everything everything you know fits all the holes the threads everything was perfect all we need to really need to do now is mark these holes to drill out that's where the majority of this work is going to be because the trunk has the ribs under them we might have to cut out a hole or something so we could reach in there but yeah this thing is coming together <laughs> So we didn't record the drama, but to get to these inner mounts, we had to cut a hole, like an access window here. And it took all three of us to have like one person hold the nut and washer in there while one of us like, you know, screws this down. We actually lost one of the nuts down into this channel somewhere here. I dropped a wrench in there. Yeah, a wrench, <laughs> a wrench is in there somewhere. So yeah, that, that, that was, that's probably the hardest part of the install to be honest, but everything else is pretty straightforward and easy. Like we just need to tighten these, everything else down, but we're pretty much done with the wing. So after that, now we're gonna move on to the side screws. Moving on from the wing, as you can see it's raining now. Like we had to pause for a little bit, but here is the side screws. See it's painted and whatnot. It comes with these brackets, right? So what you do, is the bracket has a little bent spot over there that's where it mounts the actual side skirt mounts to mounts through there and then these brackets you screw you screw them into the, the actual body it's the process is simple the thing is you just got to make sure it's as lined up with the body as possible when you once you start drilling the holes or, or screwing the screws in and all that stuff screws on the outside that go to the brackets they're not tightened down all the way yet so you all right guys so the side skirts are done. Uh, these look big, but they're actually really light because they're made of aluminum. And uh, yeah, so it does kind of bug me though because 
I don't know if it's the lighting, but the gloss paint of the that I did the uh, side skirts in seems a little a tad different from what the vinyl gloss like you know looks like. Yeah, I mean it's not gonna be perfect. Yeah, but it's close. I mean, all the PCI stuff is installed. We had a little bit of a hiccup because uh, it rained on us, and we decided to take a break and eat some dinner. Steve and Jeff were working on this while I was doing the side skirts. These uh, covers for the fog lights. Oop. See what we did or what they did. I had a clear plastic panel. I don't know where it is. And then I got this roll of plastic material from Summit Racing. He used the clear plastic to trace to trace the uh, fog light area and then transferred that over to the plastic and made the covers. So now we're just gonna rivet that shit on. These covers, what we did was kind of put marks where to drill. I uh, did it to this cover where we mirrored it over to that cover. We actually began to try to rivet it onto the bumper, but apparently these normal rivets won't work. The short ones didn't work, and then we tried these long ones, didn't work. So apparently we, look, we looked it up for soft material like plastic. We need these things called pop rivets. We didn't even know that was a thing. So we are actually going to hold off on this project until for another day. Several days later. So I'm not Steve's, I'm on my parents with the car. Uh, so I explained how the rivets we were using weren't right. I uh, misspoke, all rivets are pop rivets, <laughs> but I got these off Amazon. They are tri-folding, exploding uh, aluminum pop rivets. See, if you look, they don't compress and expand like normal rivets. When you start ratcheting them down on a, with, a, with a tool like that, it folds and expands in like a tripedal formation. I'll show you in a little bit what I mean. But for one, it makes riveting easier because the, you're not compressing metal. Also, it's better for soft material because when normal riv rivets expand, you, have, you run the risk of expanding the soft material that you are uh, uh, riveting into. The only way to mitigate that is putting a washer behind the rivet. Uh, to reinforce. So here is a rivet. I'm gonna try to demonstrate. So you, when you start riveting, wait. See that? See how it it splits and it turns into a tripedal. Then you, as you keep riveting them, it turns into like a little tripedal flower. And that's what keeps the rivet in, rather than expanding metal. So it's on. It's uh, it looks a little weird in the, in the lighting like keep right here, but it's more or less good. So uh, um, as you can see, I, I actually you could get these in different colors, and I got them in white. So yeah, uh, eventually I'll wipe, get some alcohol and clean off this red marker stuff. But yeah, it's uh, it's working. It worked a lot. It worked perfectly actually. So. Yeah, so I'm gonna do the passenger side and I'll be back. All right, guys, 
they are on. Final update to the arrow. Actually, there is one more thing I want to do for arrow. That's the splitter. Remember, I had a, a remember I have a part one of a splitter video. Yeah, that's not going too well. So we might have to go back to the drawing board in that. But anyways, this is the end of the PCI arrow upgrade with a little bit of you know a do-to-yourself upgrade at the end. So. Shouts out to Steve and Jeff for helping me. Please like this video if you uh, found it informative or entertaining or anything. Subscribe if you want to stick around for more videos of the RSX and, and you know, track stuff in the future. Uh, don't forget to hit that bell button also. Uh, and yeah, uh, I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.